So far we have analyzed the Lincoln broad in a mechanical way and in a thermal way. Now we would like to combine them both. So we're going to create a new project again from an existing geometry all the way down, rows, sample geometries, linking rod, here we are, and then create a new project. Even though we're going to make a thermomechanical, the problem needs to be set up mechanical. So we are going to use a temperature distribution, but the problem will be mechanical. You will see why. So we are in step number one of a mechanical problem. And now we're going to add a temperature distribution. So temperature distributions can be entered as a algebraic expression, point of waste data, or taken as a result of a previous project. So in this case, we have all the projects here that are of type thermal and with the very same geometry. So this last project is the one that we created in the last tutorial. I'm going to click on this button because we need a mesh to preview the temperature. So once we are back into the first step, we're going to click this button. So here's the temperature. Now, it doesn't look like the previous temperature. Why not? Because the reference temperature here is set at 20 degrees. So what does this reference temperature mean? It's the temperature at which displacements are zero. So the geometry that we, well, that we saw earlier and the measurement we took, so that means that only at 20 degrees or whatever reference temperature we set, the distance between this point and this point is 180 millimeters. So if we change the reference temperature to 100 degrees and then refresh, we would get the same temperature distribution that we got before. Now, parts are manufactured at temperatures lower than 100 degrees. So we're fine if we see, if we say that at 20 degrees, so displacement will be zero. Then we're going to refresh, so we have this distribution between 20 and 300 degrees. Because we're on a mechanical problem, then we need to set, again, boundary conditions. Even though we want to see how the part behaves, thermally, so how it expands or contracts or whatever, we need to tell uh, the solver how it's, it is allowed to expand or, or to contract. So we're going to fix this phase and then uh, we will try to see how the, the part displaces or expands due to that non-trivial temperature distribution. We need mesh, we need a mechanical mesh and this is an important thing. We don't need to have the exact same mesh that we used in the thermal pro problem. Actually, we are going to use a second order mesh and the thermal problem had a first order mesh. So, again, we don't need to match the meshes. So this is an important feature of Kplex. Uh, say we are happy with this, we are not going to be bothered with these ugly elements here just to, to show how it works. So. Once we are happy with the mesh, we are ready to move forward. So we are solving a mechanical problem in the sense that we need to specify displacement conditions. We, we could also add mechanical loads, that, and we will shortly. But we use a non-trivial temperature distribution that was computed by solving a mechanical conduction problem earlier. So this is a thermomechanical problem. So this is how it gets solved. And then what we see here is expansion because the reference temperature was 20 degrees. And then we said this is much hotter than this. So it expands in that way. Remember we fixed this phase. So it might not be what we want because now no one is allowing this phase to expand, so we are getting some stresses here. We, we, can, we can change that later. But this is the principle of how thermal mechanical problems work. What we can do, for example, now is to add an external load here again. And so we combine the mechanical loads 
and the thermal loads. Once again, so we are going to obtain stresses that come both from thermal expansion and from mechanical loads. And we are going to do this 100% online on the cloud directly from the browser. And we don't need to bother by having the same meshes in the two problems. The, the only thing we need is to have the same geometry. And that's it, this is the combination. We have some stresses here. We can see what the original uh, mesh was here. So we, we can see this is a thermal expansion. 